Ladies and gentlemen and everyone in between and beyond, welcome to the 18th episode of Times and Zoo. Today we are building the second and also the final addition to our aquarium project we started two episodes ago. Honestly, it didn't turn out the way I visualized it in my head in the first place, but I won't lie, that whole building has been probably one of my favorite builds so far. I adore modern architecture and how cool it looks in this game. Don't get me wrong, I love classical buildings, the amount of textures and details, but somehow I don't really vibe with them in this game. Maybe I'm not that advanced in the way I build them, so they don't fully resemble the ones in real life, or just the style of the game doesn't convince me enough to like them as much as I love the modern ones. So, so far we've built the main building inspired by the National Aquarium in Copenhagen, Denmark, and the ocean part of the project that consists of king penguin habitat and a huge aquarium with a walkthrough tunnel. And today it's time to add the tropical and swampy part of the project which houses four new species in our zoo, so get yourself some snack or drink, sit back and enjoy the episode. The inspiration for this build comes from Marwell Zoo near Winchester, UK. I was surprised that pretty much the first result that came up when I started researching the ideas for this build was this particular building. The idea itself matched to the style of the whole project perfectly. It's modern, but also the interior and the amount of nature vastly overpowers the raw look of the whole place. I found a lot of concept arts and blueprints for this place, so that was extremely helpful to see what parts of each version I like more, etc. because they vary quite a bit. Personally, my favorite thing in this whole build is the entrance slash exit that goes outside of the whole aquarium to this sort of plaza with the fountain and benches, which is kind of weird since it's pretty much outside of the project, but I just love how it looks and connects everything together. But back to the inspiration, I pretty much copied the whole design with back wall being the only vertical thing here and the rest is just glass panes. The original idea also had two levels and well since we're building a place to watch animals dive, we have to have underwater level to be able to see them do that. The whole thing ended up being way bigger than what I think it looks like in real life. We're pretty much at the end of the zoo area here, but I guess that solves the problem of how to finish the edges of the zoo. One of them is just natural, the river. Another one is the road, so I was kind of hoping that there will be something that will cover this one last edge because I'm not a fan of just putting a fence, which is still a valid way to do it. Most places just have fences all around the facility or the area and that's it, but I just wanted to keep it in the way it is now, so this whole project being this big and covering pretty much the entire edge is a perfect way to do it in my opinion.
So the first habitat we're building today is for spectacled caimans. I ended up rebranding it a few times since initially I wanted it to house Cuvier's dwarf caimans, but as I build it I learned they cannot dive, so there's no point of having an underwater viewing area for them. So then I wanted to have saltwater crocodiles here, which are too big for this enclosure, well specifically the male one, since they're just gigantic, so I ended up putting spectacle caimans here. So I won't go much into details about each habitat since all of them except for the one for Cuvier's dwarf caimans are basically the same. There's a bit of land near the enclosure's entrance, then there's quite a big water area where they can just swim and dive of course. I also put feeding dispensers underwater but unfortunately the water here is apparently too shallow so they do not work which is kind of annoying. Not sure why would that matter but sure they have some food enrichments on the land that's not a big deal. There's also a small island on the other side of the wooden bridge that goes across three habitats. I also built similar island for saltwater crocodiles which you will see later.
the second habitat is for platypi, platypuses or whatever plural version of platypus you use. This one doesn't have the additional island since these creatures are so small they barely need any land. So for a bit of a switch I gave them like an underwater tunnel they have to dive to get to the other side of the water section and in the cinematic shots you'll see one of them going through it. It's not much but I just love these small simple things that end up being functional and working and just to be able to see these animals use it as I intended these places to work.
third habitat is the biggest one and it's for the saltwater crocodiles and honestly I'm so confused why the hitbox of a male is so big they can barely fit anywhere. I get that they're huge but these animals aren't like solid blocks. They're really flexible, I don't know if you've ever seen the videos of how quick they can jump at something that's behind them. They literally snap in half, do an 180 and jump at you or whatever that's behind them in a matter of second. The only thing I think would be a problem for a crocodile would be a big height difference. They're not really good at climbing, but it's so annoying that for some reason the male here cannot access the smaller island because it's apparently too big and I'm sorry but I think even like an African elephant would fit through the gap but well thankfully it doesn't matter that much we're in the sandbox mode so technically they have enough space and are happy to be here I guess <laughs> The last species we're adding in today's episode is the Cuvier's Dwarf Cayman, which I mentioned before. This is the only habitat without the underwater viewing area since they do not dive. It's quite small, but for this size it looks like it's enough for them.
So that's it for today's episode. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did, leave a like. If you have any thoughts, ideas or questions, leave a comment. And if you want to stay updated with the series and you haven't yet, consider subscribing so you won't miss any future episodes. I often post some updates on the community tab, so to see them it also helps to be subscribed to the channel. Thank you for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!